Welcome to episode 5 of Community First, the podcast dedicated to discussing social and legal issues with the community. I am Bessie Krentil and with me is David William Prempe. Today we continue our discussion on Ghana's laws on intestacy. In episode 4, we discussed the distinction between dying intestate and dying intestate, the primary purpose of PNDC Law 111 and its key features. We learned that notwithstanding the existence of PNDC Law 111, it's still useful for us to make a valid will once we are alive. Today, we have the pleasure of having back our guest from episode 4, Mrs. Sheila Minka Premu. It has been over three decades since the Interstate Succession Law, PNDC Law 111, was enacted to prevent members of the extended family from taking over the assets of the deceased. But many are now questioning whether it is still relevant in modern day society. Accordingly, in 2018, a new Interstate Succession Bill was laid before Parliament. Upon the passage of this bill, there will be significant variations in the current law on succession, that is the PNDC Law 111, particularly the distribution of property when a person dies interstate. And due to Mrs. Sheila's involvement with various NGOs in developing the bill, she's well suited to speak on this matter and that's why we couldn't help but invite her here to be with us again. And so in this episode, we'll dive deeper into Interstate Succession Bill of 2018, we look at its key features, the significant changes it will be introducing and the effect it would have on the legal rights and obligations of surviving spouses, children and parents generally under the bill. And the main objective of this episode is to draw attention to the bill and urge parliaments to enact it into law. So join us as we delve into the discussion. Basically, you can take us, you can take us away. Thank you, William. So in the previous episode, um, you highlighted certain weaknesses of PNDC Law 111. Um, is that one of the main reasons why the Interstate Succession Bill of 2018 was drafted? Or if not, what are the reasons that led to the draft of this bill? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, um, you know that, well, like I said, um, some work had been done, people academics had written articles, etc., highlighting some of the big challenges. But the key motivating factor, as far as I'm concerned, was Article 22. As around 2008, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard of it. There was a talk of uh, coming up with the property rights to spouses yes. bill, yeah. okay, to address the divorce, etc. So when the AG office and some of us were doing some of the advocacy, we're talking about they realized they decided that if they're going to they already had a few um memos on comments and changes being requested to pnc law 111 but then they realized that if they're going to implement article 22 they can't and perhaps right as well bill is sort of rolling that out then there was a need to also address it when it comes to intestacy okay to bring some elements of fairness so that's the main um reason but then, like I said, they had also received comments and a lot of um, other action from um, from other stakeholders. So um, a lot of work had gone on, as I said, but it was in 2008, 2008 mm -hmm. when the, I mean, some of us were pushing for the Purpose Rights Responses Bill and then the AG's office indicated that they would also um, update, you know, instead of amending the intestate succession law with so many amendments, mm -hmm. they would rather come up with a new one. Uh -huh. So the two bills actually went together. So it's one is one for us is property rights in the course of the marriage, one is property rights at death. Uh -huh. So the two bills were the, the the first bill that came up was in 2008, and like I said, there was the intestate succession um, bill of 2008, and then the property rights bill of 2008. The two went together. Oh, okay. In there, they call them the social testing bills. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the key features um, that this bill will introduce once it's passed? Okay. Um, first of all, as I indicated, one of the things was to ensure that Article Twenty Two was well embedded mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. so that the share of spouses is taken into consideration in 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 in, in sharing. You know, unlike the other previous things, I also indicated to you that people had problems with the 
fractions. So they decided to also change the fractions into percentages. I think that makes yeah. a difference. Because <laughs> fractions and percentages <laughs> arrive. arrive at the same, the same thing. But they said that it was whole. It was yeah, so they, they, they also yeah, tried to calculate. <laughs> yes. And then you remember one of the problems, as I said, was the inequity that polygamy mm-hmm. polygyny brings. So they tried to bring in a few provisions to address that. And then they also tried to put in provisions to sort of to try to separate the spouse's share from the children's share, if you know, in some respects. Okay. Uh huh. There are some that they still own together, but when it comes to certain things, because of the um, impact of um, this thing, and then there was um, there are also some special provisions for women who don't have children with a particular mm-hmm. spouse, just okay. to take care of their need. Um, okay. So, although these are key features, would you consider just these to be the strengths, or the bill has other strengths? Oh, uh, well, as I, so basically, I mean, the bill, <laughs> the bill has some strengths, but like I said, it, it has some strengths which some people are not happy with in Parliament. Mm. That is why, it's you know, it's gone long. for, so, so it went 2000 and, 2008, then, you know, there was elections in 2008. Mm. Yeah. So it went 2009, walked around with that one for a while. Then that one didn't pass. Then it's you know it will normally will lapse. Then it went 2013, it also went the full hog. Then it lapsed. Then it went 2018. Yeah. And then now we have the 2021 one, which is pending in Parliament. So it's gone one, two, three, it four. Did get a lot of attention in 2018, though. Yeah, 2018 it got why. a lot of attention. It got a lot of attention. But there are some people who are dead bent. I don't want to mention names. <laughs> there are some MPs that anytime the bill comes up. You know, then okay. The another reality is, any bill that somebody is not behind with money, mm-hmm. you understand? Because the the parliamentarians used to sit, they will normally refer in the parliamentary um, process. You know, the thing that the bill goes for the first reading yeah, is usually referred a to a committee to yeah. go into it, etc. If it is, if there's nobody to there to facilitate mm-hmm. that committee, committee, yeah. the bill will be there for a very long oh. time. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Before they will do their reports and it comes. In times when the, some of the NGOs I work with, 2008, we were supported by GTZ. We had mm. fans to do workshops for um, 2009. But 2013, we were supported by Star Ghana. You know, so we would meet them and you, know, you meet them in hotels, you meet them in places where you need to talk, you need resources. Uh-huh. Since then, NGO funding has dwindled. <laughs> so for the 2018, <laughs> so if you're not, there are some bills that become almost like orphans mm-hmm. if you don't have the resources to. Yeah. We are still looking around for resources to 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 enable us to push for the bill. Yes, but it's, so, it's, mm-hmm. it does have. I think it's a, it will it will try to address some of the weaknesses of. of yeah. Yeah. Long, 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 long. And, 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 and you think um, it can adequately cover these loopholes? You think it's strong? It's strongly worded enough to cover the the loopholes left by it's it. strongly worded in some places to that to, to so much so that some people are not happy mm. okay yeah, so know. yeah some some people are also some are not 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 happy in there i mean it's there are some there are some provisions which were retained but yeah. there are some new provisions to which um so for instance like i said the household shuttles mm-hmm. it still goes so now they've they, they've separated the household shuttles from the house yes okay so all the house the household shuttles will still go to um, surviving spouse um, and, ch- and children. But then when it comes to a house, the, the one house, they've made some... If they are, as the, the law indicates that if there are more than one house to go by, spouse, she takes one. Children also yeah, take yeah, one. Yeah. Okay? And then, I mean, if it's still... If it is one house, you know, in the embedding Article 22 in the law, it indicates that if the surviving spouse is a co-owner whether it's an equitable owner you know we have legal ownership or equitable you know maybe for for purposes of um um uh, uh listeners if you are a legal owner of something then your name is on the documents mm-hmm. but there are some people whose name may not be on it but they contributed they have received to show they contributed towards that property mm-hmm. you know because of our gendered way of doing things maybe in one spouse usually the male spouse's name alone but the other one has an interest mm-hmm which is deemed to be equitable, yeah. which if they had gone to divorce, the person could have stood on that equitable interest to get her share of the property. 
and I mentioned usually the, nowadays things are changing. I've seen cases where the men, you know, in the olden days, men were a little shy of chasing women's properties. <laughs> now they are not shy at all. They come after the the same profession that we say, um, you know, sponsor property. Yeah, but you know that the language is new, gender neutral. And and now they it's, as they say they are not leaving things at all. They are coming after the females' properties, <laughs> like the females also come after their property. That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so now it's, it says if it's if it's just even that one house, there's an automatic there's an assumption that the surviving spouse has an equitable interest. That person has a fifty percent automatic interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then he also has a share in the other half with, with the with the with the children. So. The 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 the, the it, 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 it's 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 going to have conflict. It's also going to create more conflict because if there are children from different yes. women, then the, some of the problems will still surface. But the good thing is, he says that if there are more than one house to go by, spouse takes one, children sure. take one. So of course, whatever portion that maybe the family could get a share of, it's going to be reduced. Mm -hmm in there and in case when it comes to choice see there are two houses who chooses what the law says that the surviving spouse chooses first what they like before the children come in so you can imagine um problems between um uh, this thing there especially i always use the words the, the, the step parentage issue can mm -hmm. also create problems but it's for me it's a good provision but some people are not happy <laughs> with it so, then it says that the laws even says that where, where the um the, the economic uh, choice um and the court can also come in in there mm -hmm. so the, on the on the topic of um challenges mm -hmm. um what do you think this bill uh, is its main challenges or are its main challenges and weaknesses well people think that it's so spouse biased a lot of bias is um Put in. There's a particular section which became um like any the, the, when we're doing there's a section called interest of estra estranged spouses, Spouse. yeah. which people have problems with. So basically it says that where the spouses are estranged, you know, sometimes they are, they're married. But there's some Catholics and things, they don't do divorce. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a way in which for the women, their easy way out is because Sami Bawa And then they they are here. <laughs> Whatever. As soon as the other spouse drops. You see the next plane and they come. Uh -huh. And then they come to take their share, etc. So I think, I believe that maybe these things came out of some, you know, some of the provisions are also based on some cases and the lessons learned from it. So it says, you know, so where, and for me, it left too much discretion to the judge. Where spouses are estranged and the judge shall exercise their discretion, uh, sorry, as to what percentage of the estate to give to the estranged spouse. Which in any case shall not be less than thirty percent on the death intestate. So the purposes of this as a strange spouse means a spouse who has not lived in the same house with the other spouse for a period of not less than five years and who no longer has a normal relationship with the other spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, it's a, and, and what do you, you think know, can be done to address this? Parliament can do it. Too. Oh, oh, as for Parliament, as you know. The screening process in Parliament, especially at the consideration stage, yeah. they can take out anything that they want. Yeah. Do you understand? But for me, lawmaking is what mischief is this coming to solve? It's just having a real there's a mischief. You understand? Yeah. Married people are supposed to live together. Sometimes there are problems. Nobody wants to take the step to um apply or whatever. Yeah. And then so they live virtually like um two separate people and sometimes other people suffer in the concept. I mean, then maybe the man will go and bring in another woman to come and stay there, yeah. etc. But once Mrs. is still in the books, she's Mrs. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he's so these things cause a lot of friction. Yeah. And um, so for me, the attempts to it's not it's not like trying to get people to sit up, but maybe as a social engineering, you know, law also asks one of the things that laws to do is also to do some social engineering things. So maybe it would people learn lessons from <laughs> these things. Yes. If you know that your spouse has been away for, uh, we all know that under the Matrimonial Causes Act, if the person's been away two years, three years, eight, five, five years, years, you know what you can do. So maybe it's trying to sort of make a, a link between the two, yeah. the five years parts. Yeah. Okay. 
So I think it's very obvious that it's taken so long for <laughs> parliaments to pass this bill. And you mm. mentioned factors such as um, insufficient funds to push and some people being unhappy with some of the provisions. Are there any other factors that you think um, are be account for, account the, for delay? the delay? Yeah. For the delay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard a very famous MP say that EDS, so long as it's in parliament, that law will never pass. <laughs> because according to him, this is his language. Too much is being given to the wife, no. and the wife is not important. It's the children who are important. Do you see it? So for me, um, he's a very mm -hmm. bold person who says his mind. But I believe he may be articulating views from a yes. few others like that. Yeah, you understand that, huh? So it needs a strong push. Mm -hmm. It needs a strong push to be able to lobby to get the the the, the law through. Mm -hmm. You see, I mean, it can make so it's, a wheels in. <laughs> me. it's a political issue. I wouldn't say it's political. It's it's more of social. You know, we are social beings. Live in our social settings before politics comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it comes to the everyday interaction, it's more social than political. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. And um, we are all socialized beings. Yeah. So people are socialized from childhood. They are socialized in certain ways. Yeah. You know, those who, I always say, well, I was brought up in an environment where there was um, a lot of gender equity. I was brought up by my grandmother. My parents were divorced. My, gran my grandmother, I, myself and two brothers lived with her because my parents, both of them got married again. And she, the way she brought people up, when I was being taught how to cook, my brothers were being taught how to cook. Yeah. She didn't make any distinction. When she has work for about six, seven years, she's cutting. So she didn't make any such distinction that somebody should go and play ball, somebody should play, come and yeah. cook. No, 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 no. If it is this, you, if you're all doing it together. So for me, but in Ghana, that's not the norm. Yeah. The norm is Bema, Oba, <laughs> etc. Uh -huh. And people grow up with these perceptions. Yeah. And what they are used to to change people's attitude, not change is one of the most difficult things. Yes, yeah. This is not a social, social, sociology class. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is fact. very difficult. <laughs> it's, yes. it's, it's difficult to change minds. Yeah. And so people are very entrenched. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oba should be there and this perception that Oba is always coming to take the man's property. But I always tell, when I'm doing outreach, I say, look, go to Bakola, go to Kijetia. Who are the ones who are commercially strong there? Mm -hmm. yeah. They also have spouses. Do you understand? Yeah. But these are strong economically strong women and then of course in the banks those who work in the banks the girls are also doing very well and in good salaries you see for me i i, I am an, i am act, an activist but i believe in getting to equality not the Dominique girls Dominique. jumping you know whatever i believe in <laughs> once we reach i have a son i have a daughter yeah. i will believe in equity yeah. so that's my thing mm -hmm. yeah. mm. then the, there's another important provision in it about mortgage property mortgage estate mm -hmm. you can inherit a house but the debts that will come in that house, you get it. So there's a special um, provision where the estate includes property which is subject to a mortgage. The surviving spouse or children may make an application to the court for the sale or redemption of their property. Because mm -hmm. that can also be an off-putting something. You're going to pay estate duty of 3% on it. Okay. Meanwhile, there's a huge um, debt in relation to it. So there are a few important provisions in the law which is... Um, which, which, which I think that are, are very good in there. And, 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 and it's, it's, the law has been there for about 30 years. It's about time that we did a change. Yeah. Yeah. In there. So it's very important that I think that's, it's a lot that we should try to let it come to, to being. Mm -hmm. And I think you've actually answered my last question about why Parliament must hasten its efforts to pass the law because, as you said, there are a number of significant provisions that will come to right certain wrongs and ensure that equity or and equality are served yeah so um we're just about rounding up and uh, we just want to know if you have any concluding remarks for our listeners regarding the objects of the bill and the issue of intestacy oh the the, the object the, the bill is it's, it's very simple i mean the object of the bill itself is, is very simple it's similar to what is in the intestate succession? It does. It just an act to provide for intestate succession and for related matters. Yeah. Simple, but I believe that in substance, it's trying to actualize provisions in our 1992 constitution, particularly Article um, 22, which will ensure that 
particularly for those who jointly own properties mm -hmm. or people who have equitable interest in property mm -hmm. that it is protected when it comes to sharing of an intestate property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so for me, I think that the, 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 the law uh, is a good law. There are some interesting provisions. It also has provisions to try to bring some form of equity when it comes to polygamous um, people in poly polygynous um, relationships so that at least a, a larger chunk will be going to the spouses because there are more spouses to go by mm -hmm. to share the property. I still didn't see the provision in how to squeeze the, 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 male, the male spouse <laughs> who can bring in the multiple in there. But it's a, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good um, bill, which we should all advocate and we'll call on uh, honorable members of parliament <laughs> to please pass the bill. This is the fifth time it has gone before them. Yeah. And 2024, they shouldn't rise without having passed it. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about um, intestacy. Hey, so that's intestacy. The, the Wills Act, I think, um, it has important provisions as well. You know, yeah. the, if you don't make adequate provision for your surviving spouse or, or, or dependents, I mean, yes, yeah, children. There's a way in which they can seek redress. Yes. Yes. So, but uh, as I said, my preference is for the Wills Act. Mm -hmm. People should really try to make wills. They will not die when they make wills. <laughs> and they should make the wills simple. You know, use the, the will to just insult people, but to share their property mm -hmm. so that children who are young, when a, one spouse main income and leaves, have something to ensure their survival. Okay, thank you, Ms. Shilamrinka Premo. Thank you very much for taking time of your busy schedule to join us for um, the sequel to the earlier episode. And it's been a delightful conversation. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in to the Community First podcast where we strive to engage in conversations that matter to our society. For episodes four and five, we've delved into the legal and social issues surrounding Ghana's laws on intestacy, and I hope our discussion has been informative and insightful for you. We had the privilege of having Mrs. Sheila Minkapremo Esquire, who is a senior lawyer in the profession, and she shared her expertise on the current legal framework for intestacy in Ghana and its strengths and weaknesses and whatnot. We also discussed PND's Law 111 in the earlier episode, that's episode 4, which is the current law on intestacy. And then we followed it with this episode, which highlighted on the Interstate Succession Bill of 2018, which would significantly impact the distribution of property when a person dies intestate in Ghana. So our honorable members of parliament, we <laughs> beg you, please pass the bill. <laughs> As we've come to the end of this episode, I encourage you to take away all these key points we've discussed today. So Betty, do you have any um, concluding remarks for our listeners? So one thing I don't think I'll ever forget is notwithstanding the existence of PNDC Law 111, we should strive to make valid wills as we are alive because it's very crucial to ensure that our estate is distributed according to our own wishes. Yeah. Okay. Once again, thank you all for joining us on this episode of Community First and we look forward to engaging in more conversations that matter to our society. Community first, legal yeah, and social, social conversations with the community. Well done. Thank you.